I wonder how much we kill our credibility when we make jokes like this, when the rest of the show is so focused on process, strategy, and good stuff, and then we throw out stupid shit like that. But I do think it is at least a good lineup. And when you are building, I think the real truth is just to look for what makes sense. If people think, oh, I don't think it's Washington, play Coker. You can. I'm just saying at least the way he would have his opportunities and get there is when we jam Barkley to get all the work on the ground. And our original optimal had Hertz, which, well, I don't think he's going to be popular it is a way to fit it to go down to him. And we just saw Jacobs run all over this Jacksonville defense. So we should be able to easily see Barkley do it again. Here's the thing. I wasn't joking. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by Underdog, the week nine DraftKings picks, lineups, preview the games to target, the ownership and the lineup builds. Tambo's in the studio with me from ShipItNation.com. Saw the guys at ShipIt had a pretty good night. Saw some of your some of your subs with some uh, big totals. Yeah, members have been crushing it for sure. I've had uh, my ups and downs. Others have had it. a lot of good wins this season so far. We're only nine weeks in, so that's kind of how it goes. I'm always a late bloomer in the season. I think the more data we get, the better. But uh, nice to see them up there. Always a good sign. And across all sports, too. NBA, NHL, college football, just a bunch of good stuff going on. Yeah, you can use code Mayo over there. Use code Mayo over at runthesims.com as well. And especially code Mayo at underdog, because guess what? Winners on Thursday night. Yeah, more. More, More. dude, not quite six to one. It was 5.7 to one. But you know what? You you turn your hundred bucks into 700, 570 bucks. I I don't see who's complaining about that. Nobody's complaining. I'm not complaining about that. I loved it. Yeah, that's very solid. So if you use code Mayo right now, you get yourself a free pick for any day of the week. It'll be NBA up until Sunday, but Sunday and Monday will be NFL picks. I suppose it doesn't really matter. You can make all your NFL picks for Sunday and then just throw on a free NBA pick if it's going to be a guaranteed winner anyway. If you use code Mayo, highly suggest you go do that now and you get your deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Anything, I mean, you don't really, you don't play Pick'em at all, do you? No, I, I, I don't, I don't, I barely do anything outside of DFS now just because honestly, it's just easier. It's what I love. I'm obsessed with it. Just dropped the new one today. Not sure if you saw the post. Got to get it out there early, but Tambo's tidbits.com. Go check it out. It's not what you think it is, maybe, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited for this one. Obviously, great things going on over at Ship It Nation, but this is a DFS passion project of mine, something I've been working over four years on. So I'm going to drop a thread on it later and let some people know some more information about it. I love it. So tambostidbits.com, code Mayo at Underdog. Let's talk about the slate for week number nine. Lots of games. Yeah, 12. That- 12 games? Feels good coming off 13, though, right? You're going down a game. You could still do the early. Like last week, I had a lot of fun playing early only afternoon on top of the main slate. I didn't play nearly as much volume as I would on a main slate, but this week you can do it again. It's a 8-4 split. So if you like eight games and that feels better for you, play the morning only. If you're building classic lineups and you look at it and say, holy shit, these guys are all playing in the morning, good idea to maybe just throw that in the morning and then you could avoid the afternoon sweat if you want or run it in both. It's fine, but I don't mind it. It's just, you know, this week feels more spread out than last. My main lineup was an Aaron Rodgers lineup last week. Did very well in the 150. Ended up, I think I won like 600 bucks, 700 bucks, whatever it might be. And it was all early, guys. I didn't realize that after I put it in that I looked at it. I was like, oh, I got no going into the later set of games. Like, how am I doing? It's like, oh, I'm super high. This is great. It's inside the top 10. It's like, oh, I have no players remaining. So I just gradually got reduced, but not by too much. So it wasn't so bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. And it depends on the slate. This one is another one where the afternoon has two huge totals, 48 and a half, 48 a 45 and a half, 44. Like there, there is game spots here in the afternoon. So if you do have a morning only lineup you like, I think putting it in the early only slate is a good idea. Are you surprised that the highest total game on this slate is Dallas Atlanta, yet it doesn't seem like that's going to be the most stackable game? I guess I wouldn't say surprised anymore because it literally just happened last week with Detroit. Nobody wanted them. They crushed their team total in the first and, half. And, and no one really did anything on the team. Yeah, if you, you, Jameer Gibbs, I know that some people got to him late. He got a little bit. He was like 10 or 11%. But after that, like nobody wanted anything. But and, no one did anything. And no one did, and that was the thing. But if you had him, you were you were in good shape. But that's kind of how I feel about this week for that game as well. I, I, at least on the Dallas side, you know who to use, CD Lamb, and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and I also, I I mean, not everyone does this, and last week you got away with it, so you can get away with it again this week on a big slate. But, like, last week, Jamar Chase, just 20 points, was still good enough on the lineups because people just had the money to spend with all the value receivers, the value tight ends, etc. Lamb is a guy that I think you want to put with Dak Prescott. When he has his 38-point game or something like that in fantasy points, Dak's going to have a big game. I wonder what you see this week with some of these values if people can just play him without it because that's kind of what it's going to come down to. So... 
are there any other games in specific? Like, what do you think the most stackable game is going to be this week? Because a lot of the offenses are spread out offenses in terms of the big totals. Like, even the Bills offense. Like, I don't know where the ball is going outside of James Cook. Yeah, I've never come into a week in a while, not just this season, but, like, in general, where I feel like it's this spread out and it's just hard to really pin down. I'm, I'm interested to see what the optimal says. And then when we start from there, we can kind of go with different angles. But I think it is a week of you're able to cross off games. Like, if there's something you don't like, Don't feel like you need to fit it in. And then what I meant by that too, Pat, is just the harder part of what you and I usually do on the show and we go through and say, okay, we're starting with this stack. Now let's go to this spot because we don't want to miss out getting a piece from here. We should still do that. You should always do that. I think it's part of your process, especially if one to three maxing or something. But what is the next spot you go to? I don't, it's, it's, you kind of just got to go with what you're feeling and what you like and then trust the projections. Some use those as a guideline, but I think that's the interesting part of it. And the, I think the optimal is going to spit out a lot of Browns players. If I had to guess, mm-hmm. I haven't run it yet, but that's where I'm guessing it's going to go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Tillman Moore, yeah. Disley Olave. That's an interesting one. Cause Kamara, when we get into it is going to be, the highest owned running back, I'm guessing. At least that's what it's looking like right now. But as you made mention, that the ownership projections have been way off this year. Uh, even last year, too. There's, It's definitely something to do with the Sims. You know, more on that in the future, I think. But just in general, the stuff with the, the Sims push something, everyone gets it from the Sims saying, well, the Sims are telling me this is the best play. But no one uses the Sims. Well, no, if they use it, that's the ones that are using it are running it and going way overweight on it because the Sims say it's good. And then that flop flips their ownership so that they go from 12 to 15 to 25. And someone's saying, holy shit, how did this guy get up to that number? That's how. So it happens more in showdown, other sports, you know, with like projection sports, like NBA as well. But yeah, the other thing I don't get is like the Olave, uh, Olave piece you just mentioned. He's showing big ownership, but he, but, he, he should be. But but, but Camaro showing even more. So are, are people just running Camaro Olave lineups? Are they really? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. There's well, 12 it, games. It was going to be like if you don't want to play Camara, that if you did want to play Car with Olave, I, I guess that makes some sense. Like, no, I'm just playing $5,600 Car then. Just that's what I'm saying. You play Car yeah. and Olave. I would, I'd play them all. That's how you get away. I mean, that to me is what it's going to be because what I'm going to see right now, especially again, I don't know what's Carr's exact status. He's still Q tag, but he's it's, playing. He's playing. So if it's really, again, I don't know if ownership's right or not, but if it's really going to be, you know, 15 plus on Olave, 20 plus on Camara, and two or 3% on Derek Carr, if those guys get there and have big games, the ball came from Derek Carr in most cases. And you say, oh, it doesn't with Camara. It, it does. He still gets plenty of them. And it goes back to the olden days Drew Brees, Camara, Michael Thomas, Drew Brees throws it 10 yards. They take it 80 or 90. Guess what? Drew Brees still gets all those yards and the touchdown that go with it. So just another example of a way you could go. It's only a 43 and a half point total. But going back to your original question of is there certain games that are more stackable? That's what it comes down to. A 50 point total like last week. What was there? 70 points in that Detroit and, Tennessee and no, game. And no one was usable outside of Gibbs and Calvin Gibbs, Ridley. Gibbs, <laughs> unless you got the miracle secondary stack of Gibbs and Ridley, and some did, and congrats to you. Not many had it though, Pat, when you go to the combinations, look it up. So that would be a prime example of that again. The other one that's probably super easily stackable, just looking at these teams and seeing where the concentration of the ball is going to go, is probably Cincinnati. Because I'm assuming that Higgins isn't playing again. Yep. That's at least the way that it's trending right now. We're recording this on a Friday. Obviously, on Saturday, I'll have the full injury report and update all this stuff on the Pat Mayo experience. So be there. I know it's the weekend, but hey, you can still tune in to that one. It's a lot of quick-hitting stuff. It's like, it's like the info drop that you need. And then the newsletter comes out on Saturday evening to update that even more. I have Justin's like top optimal plays and all that. People get very confused. It's fun. Although it's very clearly stated. I don't think enough people know how to, it's very easy to use. I think it still is a little bit intermediate and they've, you know, people had chats and threads about it. Justin's post is amazing. That's why I get so many views and people see it, but just, you know, a quick rundown is obviously that it shows who's the most owned, who the the Sims are actually saying is the top top play. Optimal play. And then it's optimal minus ownership. Yeah. That's the leverage. So So, yeah, some guys can be the chalkiest plays yet still not be owned enough. Right. And also if you see someone who's, you know, 20% owned 20 um, or sorry, 22% owned, 20% as the top optimal, they're not going to show up as a top play, but they're pretty damn good. And it's saying it's almost in line. What you don't want is when some overpriced overreaction is 18. I can give it to you right now. You you want to hear it? Yeah, let's get it. Elvin Kamara right now, projected ownership 26%, optimal rate 8%. Percent an optimal leverage score of negative 17%. Which you won't see on the far right of Justin's post, for those that watch yeah. and follow it, but that's the point. Sometimes you, you also won't see a 22-20 
because it's only it's negative two. It's not going to show up. But that on the flip side of that, you may see a positive five on a terrible quarterback. But it's because they're five percent or six percent optimal, and they're only one percent owned. So yes, they have a nice positive leverage, but they're not very often going to be optimal. And again, that's just stuff I don't think as many people know how to read it or understand it. And we could help out with that. Yeah, and listen, that's a free cheat sheet. I have that in my newsletter as well, and I work off that a lot when I'm trying to make my plays. But all of the information is being derived from Run the Sims, where you can find all that stuff very easily. And I'll give one away for you right now. Nick Chubb is like the best play at running back on the slate, according to the simulations. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I'm going to play Nick Chubb. I played him last week. He's getting more and more work. This game should be somewhat close. And when the game is close or they can run the ball, they do run the ball with Nick Chubb, which is nice to see. But now it's leaving, like, when we get to the optimal in a sec, I think there are three Browns in it, but Jameis isn't one of them. Is Chubb in it? Chubb's in it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was going to say that's it. So this would be the flip side of the Derek Carr, Olave, Kamara thing I just said. We're like, oh, that's it. Like, the way to cut into their ownership is via product ownership. You're putting him in as a much lower-owned play to cut into the average of those three versus this. I would prefer to play Chubb just as the leverage play yeah. off the passing stack and just leave it away. But you could get away with Chubb and one receiver and maybe not need Jameis and the whole bunch. Or I know some people will overstack and go, you know what? I think Cleveland's in a good spot here to be able to crush. Let me get Jameis, Chubb, Moore, Tillman, and even put the Browns D and just hope they stomp them. Something like that. Yeah, well, the, the Browns are going to pop up a lot. I think some some of the Panthers are going to pop up as well just because they're so cheap. Mm -hmm. And we made the right move last week. This is what won me the money last week uh, when you and I were talking about it. It's like, which of these Tampa receivers are we going to jam in? I was like, why don't you just use Cedric Tillman for $200 less than all these guys? Yep. At least we know he's playing. We know that he gets the ball. And we knew Otten was already good yeah. there. Like, you could get away, and that's the type of lineups that won. And, and that's the other funny thing about the Carolinas point you just brought up. Uh, another thing this week, that tells us exactly what we are. What do we know going into the slate? New Orleans guys, popular. Carolina guys, going to fit in. So what that means is a lot of people are going to have a secondary stack there. That's why the overstack of that entire game can be more you know, can be um, more well, more useful or more powerful because, well, every, you know everyone's got pieces of it. When the game goes off completely, then they're the ones that are pissed off because they're saying, oh, shit, I had two guys right out of that game, but you needed five. The opposite effect of the Detroit-Tennessee game last week. Like If we had to make a call on it right now of use the like skinny stack, why Coker and Camaro or something like that, or Olave and Leggett, or I mean, I, Jonathan Brooks might play now, which renders Chuba Hubbard absolutely useless, mm -hmm. I think, at least. I'd rather just not play anyone from that game. I think that's probably, like, it's still Carolina. They're still terrible. It's not like New Orleans is awesome. Like, this game could most definitely be 20 to 10. For sure. That's what I said. And you I, don't need any of these guys. I prefer going for, like, the overstack. Yeah, the no, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I agree. That's a, that's a perfect way to put it for the way I'm thinking of it right now is I, you, I like an overstack or an avoid more than saying, like, well, I got to have a piece of that New Orleans side. It's just perfect. Like, I got to get that one guy. You don't have to. Yeah, I, I think ways you can go. I, I think if you're dealing with a game like Detroit and Green Bay, that I do think a skinny stack makes a lot more sense. Be like, oh, I think Jacobs is going to eat on this side. I think Gibbs or Amon Ra is going to eat on the other side. And that's the pieces of that game that I want, and hopefully it works out for me. Because at least those players are good. Yeah. Like, when you're dealing with the Saints in Carolina, and you're just trying to pick off pieces, like, these guys suck. That's a great um, <laughs> point that you can actually refer to from last week, using your exact example. The Jacksonville-Green Bay game. Uh, you could go Trevor Lawrence, Brian Thomas. And I had Jacobs. With Jacobs <laughs> on the other side. They were all low-owned. You still could play Otten at that point at tight end. I know Ingram still had a pretty good game, so some people did triple stack and run it back with Jacobs. But I'm just saying, like, the, the skinny of Lawrence, Brian Thomas, very good, still very good after last week. Jacobs getting the job done on the ground as opposed to the passing game. You've got yourself three guys that can go off that are at lower ownership, and they're not diamonds in the rough. These are guys that are going to help each other. Thomas helps him. Jacobs does it on the ground that forces that. So I agree uh, with you on that one. What, what's the uh, the optimal that we got right now? No, one second. I want to talk about running backs for a second before we before. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, I was I'll, filling in the pieces as we. All right, I'll, I'll I'll give you the optimal right now. How about this? Okay, sure. What, what do we got? We're, 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 we're switching up the format. I'm cheating. Sorry, guys. It's, it's week number nine. Jalen Hurts is the quarterback. Okay. Of the optimal, Nick Chubb and Tony Pollard are the running backs. Pollard sixty eight hundred bucks. But he popped up with this injury on Wednesday in his foot and did not practice. He also did not practice on Thursday. I think he's going to play, but obviously he's hurt at the moment. And Taj Spears is coming back. And that's not factored into the Sims as of yet because he's not officially in the yeah. game and he's been out for two weeks. But yeah. I think that he's going to play in this game. 
So I don't know if Pollard's necessarily the best in the best spot here, but we'll keep him in for the moment and we can work around it. Tillman and Elijah Moore are two of the receivers with Jamar Chase at 8600 bucks. Will Disley is the tight end who I'm out on because it looks like Hayden Hurst is now going to play, thus bumping Disley back into his blocking role or simply off the field. But where he was 3100 he made a lot of sense here if Hurst was going to be out again. And then you have Chris Olave as the flex and Chargers D at 3100 bucks. So I think almost off the hop, you get rid of Pollard and you get rid of Disley because I think that by the time that Sunday comes along, they're not projecting for nearly as much as this. Nothing an optimal lineup likes more than playing the defense against like three players in, play in a cash lineup or an optimal lineup. It's always the way. I never mind it if it's like the D versus the tight end for 3500 Yeah, like, who cares? Who gives a shit? And it doesn't really matter. We've seen it get there. It's just funny that optimals always seem to love that. It's like, let me just do this and find the D against them all. And, and that's usually a common rule that people separate and optimizers and stuff. So we can go to running back and just leave it. I know what you want to do. Like you said, pull Pollard and whatnot, but... If you want to go back to the regular segment, you can. I just was no, no. I, I'm, I'm just trying to see like what can we do here. So I, I want to pull Pollard because he's 6,800, mm-hmm. and there's a, you know that's a substantial amount of money to spend on this lineup for a guy that might not even get half the touches or might not even play at this point. Let's say Pollard doesn't play. Would you play Spears? I would definitely consider it. I mean, I think it would be a great spot, right? Yeah, 4700 bucks. I know it's, it doesn't really matter as much about matchup to me. And he's 4700 At that point. And so, yeah, I would, I would definitely have interest. But he is also coming off the injury as well. I think it's like Joey Chestnut is the other... The thing is, there. this goes back to my original uh, you know, point, I guess, is that, you know, let me see here, just by owner. What, what do you have by ownership right now? Kamara at the top, obviously. Kamara, Swift. Kamara, Swift, and then it's Hubbard, Brown, and Bijan. Right, so the thing this week, like, do we love Hubbard? We already no. talked about that. <laughs> um, do you have Chase Brown up there as well? Chase Brown is fourth. Yeah, and I think it's great, and he's kind of pulled it away from Zach Moss. We've seen it now like three weeks in a row over half the snaps, all this stuff. But I actually like the passing stack for Burrow there, especially because he wins Millie Makers. Chase wins Millie Makers with him. And then if there's Higgins out, even better, where you can just stack it up easily. And yes, you could fit Chase Brown in that, but you don't need to. No, you don't need to, because the guy that you actually want to play when Higgins is out is actually Mike Kosicki. There you go, that too. So, but he was the one who was running all the Higgins routes, and they were using him in that role last week. Like he was running the crossing routes, he was running the short out routes. Everyone wants to. They were say, messing around last week because all was getting targets. Jermaine Burton was they, getting them over. They, they were, but that, was just, that was when they were in pure catch up mode when they were right. down a ton. When that game was close and they were running their real offense, it was Gasicki who was the one who was most involved. Like Yoshivas is going to be there, but he's going to be like three catches for twenty yards, and hopefully he scores two touchdowns. Like you want to hope for the touchdown. That, that's yeah. such an outlier. That with Gesicki, he's cheap. He's at the onesie position like you always say. Yeah, for sure. And he just makes Burrow and Chase work because he's so cheap. I, we want Burrow and Chase. And if we happen to land on a Gesicki, or even if, like I know some people are big all junior fans. He doesn't I, run enough routes. I get it. But if they, I'm just saying, at least if they want to, I really want those type of guys in the Chase Burrow to make it work and to fit the stack just to stack on points. Because then you make it a trio pack where even if Burrow gets a little less because of Gesicki, or, or sorry, um, Chase gets a little less because of Gasecki, you still get some of those points to the trio, right? You're trying to rack up the points on the three guys together. So um, I like that call. I guess my point was going to be at running back. I don't know if I love any of these guys, and I don't feel like it's last week where we have like 15 really good running back plays. I actually feel like you can poke holes in a lot more of these guys this week, and then your Camaro one from the top rope with the uh, you know 26% to 8% optimal. Even if it comes up or the ownership comes down, whatever happens, happens, it's not really great. No, uh, in terms of optimal leverage, like I said, Chubb ends up being the best play. Barkley uh, is trending at 3% ownership right now. I get that he's 8200 bucks, but... Yeah. If you can find the money for Kamara, just find the money for Barkley or Kyron Williams. Those yeah. guys are so much better. I was going to say that, too, because it's also mm-hmm. hilarious. There's no way Barkley can do what he did the first X amount of weeks. No, because Hurts stole all his touchdowns last, last week. week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is, the optimal wants to go to Hurts. It's not like he's going to be high-owned, but because you have the money, because there's not as many value spots at all the other things, we're kind of getting a more balanced route since these prices on these receivers, even Moore and Tillman, are now up to 43 and 42 and not 33 and 38 and that sort of thing. So the one to keep an eye on, uh, obviously we don't have this information yet, but Tyrone Tracy's 5500 bucks. Apparently he's, I don't know how it's possible for him to be in stage four or five concussion protocol when he suffered a concussion on Monday. That doesn't seem like the days actually add up because it's supposed to be a day per <laughs> stage, yet he's somehow ahead of day schedule. I guess they, they he, he passed part one on Monday night after the game, apparently. It was weird too, right? Because didn't he, I think he went out before the half with, a, with something else. With a, I think it was a shoulder. Right, then came back crushed. 
and then went out late in the game with what turned out to be con- a concussion, apparently. And so now he's already rolling through the, pro- the protocol like never before seen. So, like, like if he plays at 5,500 bucks, he's probably the best running back player. He's very good. Yeah, the way it's been, for yeah. sure. And Singletary's 61. So you either get an alone Singletary at 61, which I. I don't love 61. I'd rather play Chubb for less money. But at 55, Tracy not only looks better than Singletary, like that's how you're going to try to get to Washington, just keep running the ball. Yeah, and one thing too on that, just because you can obviously play them both together, I think like a Chubb, New York Giant running back could be interesting depending on how it goes because I don't know if you're seeing the same, but for whatever reason, I'm seeing like Daniel Jones, Malik Neighbors conversations early on here. I know it's Fridays where it's not that early, it's getting later as we speak, but still... I'm seeing that, and this would just be a thing, right? Like, you could just go to that, but obviously if this running back picks up steam, whoever it is from the Giants, the way the injury shakes out or the the concussion stuff, maybe it would be good to go to that passing attack because then maybe less people are on it. So to kind of look at where teams sit right now in terms of rush defense, and if you can mirror a bad rush defense also is a huge underdog. So that's why everyone's on Camaro this week. New Orleans actually has the lowest rated run defense in the league, but no one it's going to be difficult for Carolina to run on New Orleans because they're probably going to be down by 14 points Mm -hmm. this entire game. But Carolina has the second worst, hence Kamara as seven and a half point favorites makes a lot of logical sense. Like Bijan, Dallas actually has the third worst run defense. So Bijan is just sitting there. You said everyone's going to play London. Playing Bijan is no fun at all, but has he ever been a part of a Millie Maker winner? I feel feel like like he hasn't. I I think he has, yeah. But the other ones are New England, so rare. Pollard, Miami, James Cook, the Rams, but their defense is starting to get healthier, so I kind of scratch them off. And it's Las Vegas and Cincinnati. So you have your Chase Brown, but then you have Alexander Madison on the other side of the ball. And the Raiders have basically phased out Zamir White. He doesn't touch the ball anymore. Yeah, the Madison thing's very interesting. 5,700. And we want to play those stacks anyway on the other side. So maybe he just gets involved first and then that causes the, you know, cause and effect of that. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's one of two ways for me when I think about it is if we play Madison, but we play him with the Bengal stacks, like what does he do if the Bengal stats hit? Probably nothing. He would need to score early or do you just say like, screw it, Jacoby Myers, who's, or Brock Bowers, like one of those two guys. It's probably better to go that way. And just like a skinny, if you're doing it as like, a, I know it's not cheap, so it's skinny, but not cheap is to go to like Burrow, Chase, Bowers or J- Burrow, Chase, Myers. And this was a good point. Uh, Degenerate 75, him and I do the first look every week. He brought up a good one earlier this week. I think it's a good strategy piece. Get your take on it here. Is like, can the rate, if the Raiders can't keep up at all in this game, then is it really going to be a spot where Burrow and Chase hit their ceiling where they're needed? Or is that going to be a spot where they don't? Because it's like, you know, the, the way Justin Jefferson started the season, Minnesota was winning those games. Darnold was breaking his number, but Jamar, uh, Justin Jefferson was not breaking his number. He's getting you 20 points. So you're like, oh, yeah. this is going to be a huge day. And he got the ball and, in the first half. And that's it. And they yeah. don't need him in the second half. And that 20 points is usually no good, right? It's from his price tag. So what's your thoughts on that? I guess I would throw cold water just maybe on the Bengals in general. Like, I do want to stack up the Bengals. So maybe the route is actually to save the money at running back to uh, Chase and Madison mm-hmm. and just play those two guys. Because Cincinnati's offense in the three games without Chase Higgins or without T Higgins has been bad. Like, it's been actively bad. Yeah. That's they don't score the, any points. So Chase it, Brown love might come a little bit from there right now. He's at, um, you know, I'm seeing like 15 to 16% ownership right now. Well, I, I think that it's, it's, it's expensive to use Jamar Chase for one thing. And there's a lot of good options that you can use at the very top. And, if people just say, hey, the Raiders have a terrible run defense, they're huge favorites in this game, why not take the running back who's under 6K? If we need to save money somewhere, that's a very logical spot to save money. Yeah, I'm just keep going back to the Barkley spot. Like, we keep talking about these cheaper running backs. I know we're staying on it, but, like, the um, Jacksonville is the matchup we literally just talked about that Jacobs just ran all over them. And now we get Barkley in there. They're almost eight point favorites at home. Like just jam it and, and run it in there. Eighty two hundred bucks. All right. I want to talk about defenses very quickly. Maybe some cheaper tight ends before we move on. So defenses, <laughs> as I keep rolling them out every single week, I, Washington's the play again at thirty four hundred bucks. Yeah, what are they? Thirty four hundred. Yeah. 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 Look, they look great. Like um, people will try to jam Chargers against Jameis, which I get, and they're a hundred bucks cheaper, but they're also going to be like ten times more owned. I really, I mean, that's kind of the key here is, you know, if they get up there in the ownership, you can, you know, that's where the Chubb stuff comes into, like 50. Imagine it's just him smashed on the ground. How much is Cleveland D? Cleveland D. 2,900. Yeah, I don't love that, mainly because the Chargers, they don't make very many offensive mistakes. They have a lot of three and outs. 
but they don't get sacked very much. They don't throw many interceptions. They just run very high percentage, like low upside plays, which don't generate a ton of fantasy points against. Herbert's dropping back more, but it's not like... Yeah, he's throwing more. That's but but he's not taking seven step drops and like looking downfield and making risky throws. He's like dumping it off to Lad McConkey three feet in front of him. Not yet, but uh, I'm telling you, and the Ravens suffered this last week. It's just not good. It's not good going into the dog pound and playing, man. It's just a tough spot to go into. Um, you know, west to east early game. I, I kind of like it. Just flip the build and just, you know, use Chubb off those receivers and Jameis that everyone's going to. If you don't have to pair up the running back in the D, so you don't have to do this. I'm just saying, I actually don't hate the Cleveland D at 2,900. So well, I'm just talking Ds. The, the Broncos are coming in as the highest owned right now. I think it's because people recognize them as a good defense, despite the fact that they're playing Baltimore and they're 2700 bucks. I'm good with not playing the Horrible. Broncos. Just X them. The yeah, Baltimore it, it, at home after an embarrassing loss, big-time favorites, guess what? Baltimore's smashing this no, week, so we'll talk I, about that I, I think there. the Broncos cover this game, but they're, it's uh, nine and a half points. Yeah, so. that's why a lot of people probably think it because they think it's too much. No, Just watch and see. no, the money is very strictly on the Baltimore side of no, this game. It ha- it, I haven't, I'll look it up, but I, I haven't seen it. I hear everyone talking about this Denver side, and I'm telling you, just as being a, a long-term fan – this is what happens. I, I think they play I, I, the competition. You're, you're just you're just like the fan people that come into the comments, like the Chiefs fan that yelled at Cam. No, you're just like close. you as a Ravens fan. You just hear the negative. Whatever I call it, like when I see a, it. You know, when everyone says anything about Baltimore, you're like, oh no, everyone's against Baltimore. Everyone's saying that De- Denver's gonna cry, gonna cover this week. Everyone's playing the Denver D this week. They everyone's like play, well, everyone's playing the Denver D because they're cheap. Yeah, they think I, that they're going to make I mistakes. Don't, I don't like the Denver D because I don't think that Denver's path to covering this game is necessarily generating turnovers from Lamar. I don't think Bo Nix is as good as people think he no, is. He's, not, gonna, he's most definitely out. not as good. Pa- as on he paper, is. he is. It's like I think he actually averages more um, expected fantasy points than like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, sure, those w- guys. But it's w- when you go, I mean, it's the same. It's no di- Bo Nix is no different than the stretch that Caleb Williams just played. The Broncos and Bears almost mirrored schedules mm-hmm. when you play three of the worst teams in the league and a historically bad Carolina defense, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you start looking like you're pretty good. What happened yeah. to Caleb? What you happened to Caleb? Week. You called this with Caleb. Yeah, what happened to Caleb Williams once the moment he played like a real defense again? Yeah, wasn't good. It was the end of him. And he played like absolute crap because he had no time to do anything. Yeah. The one thing about Baltimore's defense is that it's not very good. No, it's and not. so it's not necessarily that the Broncos are going to, that's how they're going to cover this game. Oh, well, it's going to be 17 to 10. No, like Lamar's going to score his points. But I think that Denver has the ability to do to Lamar what Washington did to Lamar. And Washington had to pick its poison. They lost the game, obviously. They didn't win, but they would have covered the they would have covered the number if it was set like this against Baltimore, but it was six and a half. I think they lost by eight in that game. But Washington committed to containing Lamar. They said, you know what? We're not gonna let you get outside and we're not gonna let you rush for a hundred yards. And they did a very good job of keeping his rushing numbers down. He broke one off and it was towards the end of the game when there was an over pursuit. I think Denver is going to keep a similar strategy to say, hey, Lamar, you're going to have to drop back and pass and beat us, or Derrick Henry is going to absolutely smash us on the ground, That's the which problem. they should. Yeah. Hey, listen, Baltimore should be able to do that, but I think that if you start doing that in the game, it does throw off Baltimore's rhythms a little bit, that they their upside stops being like 40 points. It starts becoming like 30 points. I got 31-10, maybe 31-17. It's just, I think that's, that the that's Broncos will be able here. to score points because Baltimore's D is bad. We'll have to see. I think the defense will be a bigger factor. I also think that's an interesting topic from what we previously talked about. Derek Henry, 100 bucks more than Saquon. They're both right there. But uh, Henry, huge sample size. Actually, his entire career averages five more fantasy points in games win, they win. In games they win. I mean, that I means they're going to win. I mean, I, I just thought we, before we came on, you and I were talking about Geno indoors versus Geno outdoors. Now, Geno's fantasy points basically in every game except for last week <laughs> have been pretty good. But the games where he's actually played well in EPA per play have only come indoors. It was at Detroit and at Atlanta. Mm hmm. And you know, those defenses aren't like bad defenses. They're pretty good defenses. Those are two pretty good teams. And Gino was just out there lighting it up. And just their offense gets slow outside, which sucks for a team that plays predominantly outside. It reminds me a lot of the Bills from a few years ago where they had this high-powered offense. And they could score points outside. But every time you put them in a dome, they went off. Like they were actually built to play inside of a dome. And I kind of feel like the Seattle team is built to play inside of a dome as well. That's where they can hit their upside in terms of just a scoring points bananas. Cause they're so fast. Like just, that inherently yeah. makes a lot of sense when your team is predicated on speed. It's like if you got Miami indoors ever, like they're just gonna out, they're gonna burn past everyone outdoors. You're just slower. Maybe it's playing on Walker week. 
Uh, that all I'm noticing every conversation we have, I'm listening. I love it. I think it's good conversation, but I think it's also just all these running backs that people want to play versus all the actual running backs that people I, are going to play. The one, yeah, like I'm <laughs> like, man, there's like really good running back plays, but they're the ones that people don't want. So I feel like the way to get different this week could be that. And then obviously we'll have a ton of different stacks we could siphon through, but I think the running back is really interesting this week. But my point was like you say that the Derrick Henry is averaging the Derrick Henry. Listen to me, I'm like the, the, like the, the, the Google. Henry, give it to him. I'm using the Facebook here. I'm like my grandma. But Henry averaging five more points and wins, like obviously that makes sense. Obviously he would average more points in games that they win. He's right? the best. He's the best though. I know. I, 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 I mean, how, if we went back and looked at every running back in the league, who gets more than 70% of its team's touches out of the backfield. Yes. I would almost guess they all average that, way more That is built into the same stat that he pops off the chart on. It's they don't average five more fantasy points per game in the wins like him over such a long sample. Sure. So it's, it's more so saying when they win, he crushes his number versus the other. And, and there's other ones like that. You know, I don't love a stat like this unless there's a real sample size. His is literally his entire career. That's why I like it a little bit but better. But now it's on two different teams. How do you even judge that? I, I don't. I'm just saying it's when it's that consistent for him. It's it's not a... If I every have, Your point is right, but I'm saying his is the outlier. That's you, the difference. Do you know who the next few guys on that list are? Because I would guess... I'd have to look at it. It would be non-pass. Like, I bet you Nick Chubb actually does very well on that list as well. That would just be my hypothesis because he doesn't catch passes. So in games where they <laughs> win, he's running the ball more. So therefore, he's getting more touches. Whereas in games where they lose, they basically take them off the field. So let's play Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb this week. If you think that the Browns are going to win, which you do. I do. Yes. There we go. So, so, so I think they're going to continue on. I think that's a good, good call. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Kids are always learning and growing, but as adults, sometimes we lose that curiosity. What's something you'd like to learn? Gardening? A new language? Or, for me personally, how to finally beat your best friend in golf? Not cuss, but, you know, my other friends. I want to beat them at golf. I can beat cuss, no problem. Therapy can help reconnect you with your sense of wonder, because your back-to-school era can come, honestly, at any age. It's helpful learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries, and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major traumas. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All the best things that you need. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Pat Mayo today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Pat Mayo. Well, that's an interesting starting point for some of these DK lineups. Uh, let's do that. Let's go Chubb and Henry. <laughs> All right. Let's so do Henry's it. the most expensive at 83, and then Chubb is 58. It's a very reasonable price for Nick Chubb. Now... If they do fall behind in this game, he's going to be sitting on the sidelines. You, As a Ravens fan, Keaton Mitchell might be active this week. I, when I broke it down in the rankings, I don't think he has any effect on Derrick Henry. I do think he has an effect on Justice Hill. I don't know. He, Justice Hill just got paid, man. He did, but Keaton Mitchell is he, I think like, he's le- legit one of the fastest in-game players I think I've ever seen. And guess what? It just goes, there's no homerism. It's the same thing back to it. I love that for the Ravens because I know a lot of people complained about it last year because it's not good for their fantasy teams. Why are the Ravens using so many different running backs? Because the other team is tired of shit. They can't figure out what's about to happen next. And they got to account for this running back, that running back, Derrick Henry. Oh, and they got Lamar, who you don't know where the cameraman can't even follow (laughs) his handoffs. Guess what? That's confusing for a very tired defense. So that's why they do it. So I like it for the Ravens more. I don't think um, I was ever going to be in on Hill anyway. And Mitchell is awesome. No, but he just adds another. Does add a component to it for sure. I agree with you there. What about Deontay? (laughs) <laughs> to God, I don't even know about that. People seem to think that's a, a good thing. I, I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing. They got him for free. Yeah. I, He's better than Nelson Aguilar. From put the it that business way. side of it, yeah, I get it. It's like, sure. But it's like, I don't know how much it's actually going to do for the Ravens. I, I give people shit when they call Lamar a running back because he has, he's like up there with more. I think it was like Marino, Brady, these guys with the five passing touchdown games and way earlier in his career. He still can pass the ball. He's got better at it over time. But yes, he runs a lot. So I, I love I how, how great the Ravens offense is. And then they'll get to the playoffs and score like 10 points. That's what happens every year. <laughs> call it. That's why I said called it last week. So they'll play down to their competition here. No problem. 
And they, I didn't think they'd lose, but they actually went on to lose the game last year when they played San Francisco. Oh, Super Bowl preview. I, the 49ers are going to crush them here. The Ravens win. No problem. It's not the actual playoffs. It's not the Super Bowl. Wait for that. They won't win. That's how it goes. Who are the cheap tight ends you like this week? That's the other one, too. So, yeah, he, I was going to bring his name up earlier just to see what you thought, because we talked on this show last week or the week before, I can't remember what it was, about uh, because I think Maddox was in for one and the other, maybe before that, about Taysom actually being part of what moves this offense and what helps some of the other guys. It's just the way it works. There's another guy to look out for. He's really tricky to understand. If you're not playing Kamara, and we already talked about that, and you don't have interest in the Car Olave or even Olave as a one-off or anything at all, Maybe you do just play a guy like Taysom. It's a onesie position. You fill it out. You know, what's his price this week? He's $3,800. So the other guys that you could potentially go to, if Hayden Hurst doesn't play, I do actually like Will Disley at $3,100. But I just, and Will Disley's on the injury report as well. But I think that Hurst gets himself back this week. Calcaterra is 34. He actually showed up, a li- he showed up more last week than he did the week before. Last week was a feature game for him. If you didn't know, the C in Calcaterra stands for Cincinnati. He's born there. He had family uh, in the stands. Yeah, he they was wanted, two, two for 49, I think. They wanted to get Hero. him involved, and they just gave him a little bit of action. I, I don't care if he runs all those routes people show me. I'm not, I'm not as interested in that one. Hunter Henry at 39 was <laughs> fine last week, but he was the, like, Kate Otten was there. If you didn't use Kate Otten, you were screwed. I, I, used, I used, it's funny, in the winning lineup that I had, I didn't use Otten, and I used Hunter Henry instead because I had Jets, Patriots. I, I, I just had Garrett Wilson, Rodgers, and Hunter Henry just to fill out that game. If I had just used Otten, I would have won a ton of money. And you probably, again, would have to look at the lineup and review it or something to see what you could have done or if it could have I, I could have used it. Otten for like 100 bucks less. Right, and you, but I'm saying maybe you looked at your lineup and said like, oh, he's too chalky or not. Or you kind no, of I just said I want, I want a Patriot. This Patriot makes the most sense. Gotcha. And the moment May went down, I was like, well... That's the end of me. Because I was going to say, remember last week, I don't want to say it because it was nauseating hearing this on the broadcast, but it was a certain t- day that they kept talking about. And Hunter Henry actually disappointed for, for what everybody else did on that day. And I wonder if that follows suit here because he still got six targets. He still got a bunch of yards. He just didn't get in you know, what everybody get else zone. didn't get in the end zone, didn't do nearly what the other ones did. Do you so, know what the most tilting thing was about National Tight End Day? Oh, God, you sound like Scott Hansen now. Go that ahead. Every fucking tight end on Denver scored a touchdown besides Kroll. Oh, I love that. I'm glad we got to that point. I told you this guy wasn't crossing shit. That's the thing. It was instead all of the other end, ones. They, he was too good that the defense had to lock in on him, him to let everyone else run free. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. I, I liked the bit on that, but that was uh, because you clipped it and everything. I had to just sit there and pray. Fingers crossed on Sunday. Like, don't let this guy get in the box, please. Oh, I thought he sake. had one, but it was some guy I legit never heard of before. Oh, okay. It was fake Jordan Aikens. Something else Aikens. He was oh, like 44. God. It, it was a, a crazy day for that. As I said, Scott Hansen was just beating it up on that show. But he, um, you know, the, the one guy going back to the Hunter Henry stuff, still just 3,900. I don't think, too, just to talk about it while we're at this position before the lineups and stuff, is that it doesn't feel the same. The last two weeks, we had the you know realistic wide receiver one or twos for their team at extremely low prices, 35, 38, 41. I don't necessarily feel like that. Like Even if Disley gets in there, I don't think he's a bad play. I think he's fine. Yes, uh, he's the play, man. Right. Higgins is out, play Gesicki at 31. That's the move. That's what I'm doing. So so that's he's there, and then even your your Henry call, he's still just 3,900. He didn't really get a boost. He was 38 last week. He went up 100 bucks. It's a small boost. But again, much like the running back position, it feels like there's actual options here that we'll like. And I also think some of the guys like um, Njoku, opposite side of Disley, maybe a McBride or a Komet or something like this, John Smith. like these guys, I'm not necessarily going to go to two tight end lineups because I don't feel like they're that good. I feel like these are good fill-ins though for using up the onesie position. Komet is really interesting because he, I think he had zero points last week. Not, not many people in the Chicago offense did much so last I've- week, but to go back and look at it again, when has Williams played well playing against teams that don't generate pressure? You know who doesn't generate any pressure? Arizona. Yeah, back to the well on him, maybe, but also like it could be just a good using Caleb Komet, if, especially with the Swift popularity. You can play Swift and Komet. You can, you can mix it all up. I'm just saying like the setup here is Komet, and when you got to fill this position with somebody and you're not loving the chalk options like we kind of mentioned originally, I'm okay with just going with a guy like Komet, even like the Taysom Hill thing in some, like you mentioned, if it's just going to be that much popularity on some of his other guys, if you're going to pivot and try and leverage it at the same time on that team, why not do it with... Um, you know, guy, you know, someone like him that can actually fill it up. And Komet is very boom bust. You you just mentioned some of the other stuff there, like the stuff for Caleb Williams, but Komet, 4, 24, 8, 6, 26. You know, last year, same thing, 11, 11, boom, 18. And his bad numbers are like 7s and 9s. 
So it's not like he's getting you nothing, and then he can get you the 25 points. So I like that call as well. Well, let's start building some lineups. I already plugged in Henry. I, I have Chuba Hubbard in. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for Nick Chubb. Chubb and Chuba, you got to watch out on your no, clicks, I, man. I don't think you need to watch out for that one. <laughs> Henry and Chubb will start 83 and 56. Do you want to build out Burrow just to see how it works? Because yeah. it seems like we both have interest there. Let's see what it looks like. Burrow, Chase, Gasicki. Yeah, you like that? It's just Gasicki saves so much money. <coughs> Excuse me, but we have to go back to... Um, I also don't mind adding it because if we're going back to the running back position. We have an 8,300 Henry. So yeah, eight, I think that's a eight good targets call as well. last week. Lost a fumble too, but made one of the nicest catches of the year. Beautiful one. When your hands are that big, it's like Garrett Wilson's catch on Thursday night. That was nice. Awesome. Wow. Um, what I will say too is I don't think you need to run this back. Just going back to you it. You don't too. need to, but I, the Raiders aren't expensive, is the thing. Yeah, it may, it may save you and you may want to for that reason. Like Myers like is 5,300. 53. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Let's, let's check in Myers. Do they. There's one thing Myers enjoys. It's funny. His entire time in New England, I think he went like two years without scoring a touchdown. Since he has joined the Raiders, he is their primary red zone threat somehow. Yeah, he's been fine. And he also cut into Bowers weeks where, you know, like Bowers, not like everyone was going to be him again because he's been crushing has it. Has Bowers scored a touchdown? Yet? Myers comes back in and gets the job done. Um, Bowers? I think so. Has he? Yeah, he, he did has against uh, Denver. He has one touchdown this year. For a guy who's like their highest usage player and a tight end, who you think would be used in the red zone, he's just not. Yeah, and you pay 6K for him, so whatever. Yeah. But uh, he would fit still. I just I like the Gusecki to make the other stuff work. The last thing I'll say here before we close it out, because we talked through it and there's like a ton of different defenses at all different Washington. places. No, no, stop doing Washington. this. Washington. What game? You need to look at this when there's 12 games. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. I want the one I have rated as number one that no one's playing. You don't need to pick a defense. I'm not going to keep telling you this. I'm, what I'm, I'm saying but is... I want to pick a defense. What game do you feel like you're missing out on? It's good for the people to know. Like, you've got your Cincinnati stack. You feel good about these two running backs. I mean, we don't, we don't have any Dallas, Atlanta. How much is Mooney? Throwing Mooney at 6K and then with 2,600, that's not good. I don't know if you have that money. That's what I'm saying. You, you don't have to worry about what you're avoiding as much as what you could be missing out on. We, is we there something here you feel like you have a better spot you can pick up on? Washington, the Giants would be one. Chicago, Arizona, maybe. Um, the Rams in Seattle, possibly, depending on what you find for price points there. So is there any secondary stacks or just one-offs that are cheap enough that are within those spots that you think you could fill out with. I, I don't think there's anyone cheap enough is the problem. Like, cause if you go to Dallas or Atlanta, I guess you could use Ray Ray McLeod. He's 3,800 bucks. And you don't need to do a secondary. No, stack. no, I'm just yeah, saying, so but like, to pick off pieces. You yeah. Can use, Ray Ray. How much is Tolbert from that game? Tolbert is 50. Well, like, that's too much for Tolbert. For but what I would do is like your Ray Ray thing. And then you could get away with plugging in Washington and, and saying, okay, do I like anyone at 4,800? Yeah. It leaves us at 4,800, which is, let's see at 4,800. We have, and then do you like it from there? Slayton, no. Although we had a good Monday night game. I mean, this would be a perfect spot if Pollard sits. You could play Tasha Spears in this spot, no problem. Yeah, that's true. But, yee. So now what I do is say, okay, is there anybody above or below that I feel good about? In this case, uh, probably above. Probably above. Who are we looking at above More here? More tight ends again. Though. That's weird. It's, Just, like... it, it's funny because this is why the Browns end up populating the optimal because they're all so cheap. Like, you could throw Tillman into this, no problem. You could throw Elijah Moore into this, no problem. If we drop down from Commander's D to anyone, Judy is sitting right there for us to use if we want to. They just kind of hit all the prime spots. Yeah, and it's crazy because you might have to just take Henry out. Well, if you drop Henry And down, just get a different running back that you like in this type of build, right? Because you're already using that 8K plus on Jamar Chase. Let's not... Sac like, don't... Do we want Ray Ray McLeod and some random in there and have to get off of the Washington D or can we just get rid of Henry and say it's going to be Chase that explodes go down to a running back that you like who was somebody else you mentioned earlier that was Ken down? Walker yeah let's try that I, mean, I play Ken Walker every week dude's good and then it gets us up to 5800 he, I mean, he had a bad week last week against Buffalo before that 23 2014 33 were his last few games yeah and, and now you can play Madison for example and, and run the game stack there if you wanted so get rid of Myers? You could that you could look at that too. I'm just giving an example of sort of where you land is around that 57, 5800. You could play McBride for a second tight end if you think he's more of a receiver. You could play Wandale Robinson, not uh, Wandale, your boy, but uh, Wandale, 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 like I like to call him. He, he's not there, but I'm saying if you wanted to game stack it, or you could play Madison and then see what can you get for 5400 at a wide receiver. I still like Myers better. 
Cortland Matt, Sutton is kind of, yeah. yeah. But that's what I mean. So, yeah. What, what do you like instead of Madison then at 57? Or well, let's just keep Myers in because we already have that stack. We'll go Burrow, Chase, Myers, Gasecki. I'm good with that. And we'll try to build that one out. We could go Gibb. We could go Bijan. Man. Or is there any. Who do you like in the $6,000 area at running back? Anyone? Because they're not great options. What do I got here? Let me just see. I'm going to just quickly see what this looks like. Because do you have anyone at 6,300? I mean, Stevenson, Brian Robinson, Tank Bigsby. Is there a receiver who's there who's not bad? Stevenson. No. Chris Olave at 61 is like the one guy. Yeah, and you, you need to find a couple hundred bucks. Was there another receiver below... Our guy, uh, your guy, uh, Ray Ray there that you were talking about. I know you don't love him, but you just sort of brought him up. Like, would you consider somebody at 33 or 32, anybody down there? No one pops out this week to me like they did last week in this spot. Like, the two best value plays. I I guess the one you could go to is Jalen Coker at 36. David Moore is 33. But now you're just on, like, crappy. You know, actually, no. Where's Tipton? That would be someone I would look at. Now, he's 4,000. Yeah, I like the Coker one beyond... You know, just because of some of the stuff going on there. It's just Bub Means is probably not going to play for New Orleans, meaning Tipton's probably going to run all the routes. But again, he's priced the same as Cedric Tillman, who's actually good. Keep landing on game stacks here. But if you go Coker and keep everything else the same with your Kenneth Walker that you had in there earlier and stay on Washington D, you can finish out the game stack with Brock Bowers at 6,000, or you can play Darnell Mooney, Chase Brown, um, you know, with his, is the overstack, Khalil Shakir. Like there, there's lots of guys that you oh, land in a better range. You know there. who we didn't even talk about who is also 3600 bucks is Parker Washington. Yeah, actually fine with that as well. So let's throw him in here and see what that does for us. So we'll throw in Parker. So I, I need a running back and a flex, and I have 6650 to spend. So you took Kenneth Walker out, right? I took Kenneth Walker out. So I, That's I, fine. Ju- I just have Nick Let's Chubb drop right him now. down to somebody. Do you like... We don't we, need to drop him down. We can even pay back up. We want to put Henry, if we wanted to put Henry in now... Now we have 5000 for a flex, assuming that the Commander's D is still in. And we can always drop them down if there's someone just above that we like. So my take, and this is exactly Cr- how I, I mean, look at it. I mean, you can just play Christian Watson get a Packer on the team. I, I don't like anybody from 46 up to 55. Like, there's nobody in there that I love. No one? So I would rather not go up, and I would rather look down. Like, maybe your Bijan call fits. That's 5900 And that gets me out of the range. Like, 5900 you have back to that those same guys so if you wanted to go down further and get away from that 5900 range i think you got to go way down and get like because you can go yeah there's not no one i really i mean you get it's, you can go it's like pro- seven it's probably double tight end is the move and i i don't want to continue to i mean i don't have enough money for bowers do you like mcconkey or i mean qj should be back this week no do you, do you like he's, Swift? He's, you know what that's actually maybe the play at 4400 bucks Quentin Johnston should return this week. And everyone's just on McConkey now. He hasn't played since week six. He's got hurt in each of the past two games that he's played. But, you know, weeks two and three, he's catching touchdowns at least. I don't but, like and he's 4400 bucks is what I'm saying. Out of the – I mean, we're already off the board here. Do you like any of the chalk between Kamara, Olave? Who was the other guy that we had up there earlier? Um, Kamara, Olave – uh, in terms of projected ownership at all positions right now, we got... It's trying to see how you can run it out, but this is what makes it tougher, na- right? This neighbors, Swift, Ladd, Calcaterra, Drake London, Bijan, Jacoby Myers, Puka. Are you worried about this Puka injury? Because I worried about it last week. wasn't a thing. And now this week, no one's going to worry about it because they didn't worry about it last week, and it will be a thing. That's probably what it is. That's <laughs> I, I wasn't super high on him last week, and it obviously hurt, but at least it was only a showdown slate. You, you know, usually you got it or you don't, so that's fine. But, uh, you know, this is the spot, 7,200 coming back. We'll have to see. Did yeah. you let, Oh, Swift was the other guy because Swift gets you up to – like I think people round this out with Swift and Pollard. I don't love that. I'm just saying I can see that's how people I, I don't would, like that at all. I can see that's how people would round it out, and that's what I was trying to look against. How about this? I got it. Burrow, Bijan, Chubb, Chase, Myers, Parker, Washington, Gesicki, Trey McBride, double tight end, and Commanders D. Yeah, it's fine. You even have more money if you want to play. If you want the ultimate leverage here, just use Ravens D for 100 bucks more, which we do have. If everyone's using Denver's D and no one is using Ravens D, Ravens D is probably a pretty decent play. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that, but I think in this Washington's fine. You had them already. I'll, I'll take that one. That was what I was looking at as the best out of what we had. 
Um, you know, it just depends on what you like. That's why I always say like the defense thing doesn't bother me as much because I can just take Washington down to Cleveland, right? Go against the the Chargers there. And then I could run McBride up to someone in the $63, $6,400 range and just call it a day. But even then right now, it's not something I love. There, there's nothing I see there that's Brian Robinson, I guess. Don't love it. Hey, that could be the play this week, Brian Robinson. They've been really struggling inside the red zone because they continue to try to pass so much that they might just be like, you know what? Let's run. I and feel pound. like, yeah, they they try to, but his, like his snaps are down huge too. Well, he's been hurt too. Like yeah, he, but, he didn't practice for three weeks and just started. He's like, I'm here on game day. I was just looking at that. So what, what was it? Uh, last week and the week before that he played, he played 26 of 69 and they played 35 of 74. He still got 16 attempts on the 35 snaps, but it's like, man, he's... Yeah, and which is way down, and that, that perfectly coincides with his injury. Now, but he's this is the first week where he's been like a full participant in practice all week, and he wasn't in those weeks. So that yeah. logically makes sense to me. So this lineup is about ten points off the original. How much are the Titans D? Remember the Titans. Titans D thirty two. Thirty two. If we bring that lineup back up, and we get rid of Washington D, because the Titans D is another D that I love this week. Didn't really even talk about them all that much, but at 32, just... It gets you to Olave or Singletary. Who do you like better of those two? I, I think the lineup's so different that you could just play Olave and... Yeah, know. no, I'm just saying, like, objectively, between those two, which one do you like better? I have a problem with Olave for one specific reason, is that it looks like he suffers a concussion every week and has to go to the sidelines. Yeah, I, Two weeks ago, he had to leave the game, and then he missed a game. Last week, on a second catch, he had to go back into concussion protocol. He was cleared and able to come back, but... Dude just leads with his head. Like eventually, you have to start to look at it and say. And he refuses to wear the guardian cap, right? So, like, if you're gonna put your head down on every catch you make and get hit in the head, like the possibility for him leaving the game is super high. <laughs> yeah, and that's the you know, thing I always talk about. Like, this is the you know the picks or the plays. Like, I, it's not really who I even like. It's I think the lineup's over leveraged when we have super low ownership at like six spots. I don't need to go away from someone and I have Olave projected way better. Okay. So I'd be comfortable just plugging him in. I also think his ownership would be the one to suffer be like come down before Camara's ever would because Camara just looks so good to everybody. And it's the Carolina matchup and they're healthy. Like, oh, he's fine. All this stuff. But the other argument would be, I think Singletary's projection would come up and we're already sort of going against the Washington D here by switching it up. And so well, um, I, if, tra I, if Tracy can, Jr. was out, I'd I like Singletary. There. I can give you his projection. Right? I have them. Uh, you, you have the non Tracy projection. Oh, I do not. Sorry. Go ahead. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm going to go like manually do it right now. Yeah. See Washington and giants. And like, would you play Tracy if Tracy plays? I'd be interested. Yeah. I think I, I really like him at 5,500 bucks. I, just because it's, it's a, you know, close, closer value priced guy that you could feel like could actually do something with it, have some ceiling. Let's see, 61. Get some salary dump here. 6,100 for Devin Singletary. His 50th percentile projection is 11.1 .1 points, which is not very good. Yeah, no. I, I think, again, depends on how you feel the game goes and whatnot. That, that would give him... The other thing is, too, is if this Daniel Jones neighbor stuff is real... I just don't think you'll see Singletary and Tracy get as much, no matter what the situation is, because that would overlap it. So I, I'd be more interested at that point as well. So he's projected for 12.5 points. So 13 attempts, 62 rushing yards, two and a half catches, or sorry, two catches, 12 yards, and half a touchdown between it. And what do you have Olave at straight up now? No, I need to go look at Olave, don't I? I'm just curious, just to see. Like, I, I have quite a gap on it already. That's why I said I'd be fine which is using him as a one-off here versus trying to make something else work. Like I'd rather Olave still, regardless if he, if he gets a concussion, so be it, but I'm not chasing Mostert or trying to get Dowdle in off the last minute, you know, what whatever that was, that? no idea. Darnell Mooney, Brock Bauer, like these guys but, are Well, fine. Mooney is someone with substantial upside. Like Mooney, I think has outscored Olave most weeks. Yeah, I mean, you can continue, but I think also, too, it just depends. He's had two touchdown weeks and stuff, so it's yeah, like... Yeah, because they throw him the ball for touchdowns. He's got, he's got two weeks, three... Three decent weeks, I guess. Olave projects for 17.6 points, so substantial. So five points more than Singletary. That's on six catches for 79 yards and you know, fewer touchdowns. 0.4 of a touchdown, not 0.5 of he's a He's not, touchdown. yeah, I mean, Olave has, you know, 20, 17, 22, 28. Like, he's got some good weeks without even getting touchdowns. He needs to score, and that's unlikely, but the way it's been anyway. <laughs> but uh, that's what I'm saying. At this point, like, the lineup to me, 
I get much closer to that optimal, still have tons of upside in here from, from a leverage standpoint that I'd be fine just rounding it out with him. And if you decide to change it later, go ahead. But I, I think that's how I would run it. Okay. So that was the Joe Burrow stack. I mean, we also could have played Brock Bowers in that spot too. We, it was funny. We just kept landing on the five-man game stack. Yeah. Like you play, you land on Bowers, you land on Madison if you get a little closer back and forth. And I think that's something to be said to my original point I brought up earlier, that shout out to Degenerate75, saying like, if they can keep up, can you, you know, then it's different. That is what you're building for though in that scenario. Because if they keep up, that's because Myers, Bowers, Madison did something to make it so there has to be some back and forth. So you should almost build for that if you're building it and not just build the standard stack that everybody else does where it could fall apart. Let's build Jameis out. Yeah, let's just... Like, if all of his options are in the optimal lineup, like maybe he gets there too. It's, well, it would make sense, especially because they got a bit of a price bump. Like you got uh, your original Tillman and Moore. And I, I'm not going to use uh, Moore. I'm going to use Tillman and Judy. I think Judy is the play if you're going to play anyone from Cleveland and can afford it. No one's playing him. He's still their best receiver. I mean, I suppose you could argue in Joku is. Maybe you just go, instead of using the cheap, cheap options, you use the slightly more expensive options, which still are not expensive, and use Judy and in Joku. I, would, I was just about to say, I would rather, if I'm using Judy, I kind of want to use it to move off of this Tillman is the man after two weeks yeah. of great stuff, including one week with two touchdowns. He is, and it's been great, but we're not playing for that. Like, that's the difference here. We're just saying what could happen. You get all the 5K guys. Yeah. Judy and Joku, Winston, I, I kind of like that setup there. That's that's what I was going to just try and lobby for. Here's my issue with the Chargers. I don't know who to play or if I want to play any of them. You want to play Quinton, you say. QJ. I, I do want to play Quinton, but I don't know if we need him if we're structuring our lineup like this. You definitely don't. I mean, you can you need him if you need him, but I'm saying like when you're building it out, you don't necessarily need him. Now, he is 4,400, and we were just digging around through the Parker Washingtons of the yeah, world. Yeah, but and we also stuff. used Burrow and Chase, which were sucking up an awful lot of Right, I'll just say, if we cap. do decide that you want some action here that way, because now you got to be doing, like, let's go to running back. What do you really want here now? Like, do you want to get Chase Brown in, since we're off of the, J the Jamar Chase stuff, and want to use the opposite Chase? Or what are you thinking here, putting into this lineup? I mean, if we're going to spend up, what if we use, like, Kenneth Walker and Cooper Cup? Yeah. I think because um, everyone's now on Puka, everyone off of Cup, or we use Kyron and Walker, and that's where we maybe use Kyron and Walker and just not worry about any secondary stacks yet, right? Just see, that's kind of the other thing too. With twelve games, you'll notice, you know, while it's nice to put it together the way we usually do, you also can get away with playing some of the good spots. I and still just... like Gesicki here, and I'll you know, I'll just default to Commanders D for the moment since I used Titans in the last one. So at least a sixty one hundred dollars for wide receiver. But you got slots. you don't want Gesicki if you've got Njoku. You use double tight end. Oh, okay. I don't I don't think it's a double tight end week. I mean, Njoku, I... We weird, got so weird, many more value. We, like weirdly enough, Njoku, with the way that he is being used in this offense now, basically when Deshaun Watson isn't the quarterback for Cleveland, he's... I, they use him like a receiver. Like he, You might as well just not put tight end next to his name, put receiver. Sure, so, but you're, you were saying that and then also playing Judy. So if, you're, if that's your thought process, I would actually pull Njoku and play Gusecki, or I would pull Judy and do something like that where you just play James. Not to say they can't all still get there. I'm saying, but the description you just had tells me that it's like you're like feeling like he's going to be more of the guy. And it's not even that he's more of a guy. It's just I think that if you were to put wide receiver next to his name and not tight end, he might actually be more money. Like he no, might be for a, sure you would, and that's why he was. That's why it was a two tight end week when he was forty one hundred because he was literally uh, the main guy. We thought we didn't even know about Tillman yet at that point, being a guy that's going to pop up. Everyone was playing Elijah Moore, and he got all those targets and catches. I just don't know if we'll need the second tight end here. I also think you'll need some Chargers to push this stack if it's going to happen. So I feel like I would rather just play QJ, even though I don't love him. But I, I liked your call of what that could be. What about Lad then? That's possible I mean, as well, yeah. D Disley makes a ton of sense if Hurst doesn't play, and that's also big savings. Well, that's why I think more people would have, and more of the chalk will get there as well, is like Jameis, Tillman Moore, or Judy Moore. Maybe they go to Judy over Tillman or Moore, and then they just use Disley as the run back. Why I was saying, like, imagine if everyone's on Disley, you get to a QJ at 44. It's kind of awkward, but it does help you out. It, it makes sense in this lineup, is okay, what I'm let's throw him in. Hopefully he can score a touchdown. That leaves us with 5,400 for a wide receiver and a flex for the moment. I mean, we can do the ultimate pay down if we're not using any Washington guys anyway. We could use the Giants D. Or if everyone... Yeah, we could leave, we could take out Washington D for a second, too, if you want to just see what yeah, that that's what gets I'm saying. us. Like, we can use throwing Giants D. 
but we have money. Yeah, let's throw in Giants D. So now we have 6000 for a wide receiver and a flex. Yeah, so that could be Chase Brown and... Let's try that, yeah. Because he kind of fits off of our plan from... Oh, it lands on Olave again. So this is how Olave ends up getting all of his ownership. Because everything lands on him. Yeah. But this is a nice, this is a nice lineup, I think. Winston, Judy, and Joku. Quentin Johnston, instead of Disley, you kind of flipped that, so you got a little bit of spot there where you're up. You're still paying... You're, you're paying the price on ownership with, with Brown, Olave, Kyron Williams should get some. And I think the, the Giants could get steamed up a little just as the cheap D. So you're still getting some guys that are owned here, but you don't have the Tillmans, the Moors, the Pollards, the Camaras, all that stuff. So this is, this is a nice lineup. Six points off the original. Really? I, I like... And that's with QJ, who doesn't have a good projection. But if he's back, I can see Yeah, him. I mean, he might not play. Let's see what the, the latest update is on him. Practice fully on Thursday. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, he's back. There you go. You know, he's been doing this long enough. So what, <laughs> what was your secondary thought going to be there? It's just, are there, is there a cheaper, I mean, are there cheaper running backs we can go to? Yes. Like we've, we've tried it with Chase Brown, Madison, and Chubb in that range, but we've also just done Kyron and Kenneth Walker. Is there a middle point like James Conner and DeAndre Swift? And that's how we get access to that game. Okay. So. To clarify, and yes, there is. The answer is yes. Let's pull those guys and even pull the Giants D. Let's pull Kyron. Let's pull Walker. Let's pull um, the Giants D. And let's pull Olave. Because we don't, we, like you said, if we don't want to keep landing there. My question would be, well, let's try this. Is there an expensive wide receiver you want? And that's why you want to go lower at running back. Like, is there someone you feel like you're missing here that you need to get in? It's not that, I mean, yes, it could be anyone. But it's... If we're seeing a week, and we just saw this last week as well, where we made the right call last week, where everyone went to the Tampa guys, we went with Cedric Tillman instead. A lot mm -hmm. of people made that correct decision as well. That now, because of the cheap wide receiver hit last week, now we're seeing all these Browns receivers pop back up again. These cheap Brown receivers, Parker Washington, Jalen Coker. What if we just, remember we talked about what if we don't use a receiver below $4,000 last week and try yes. to build those lineups? kind of feel like to do that again this week might be the move. So what if... So I can give you a quick one because you asked about it earlier and I flipped it for you. I, I got I got one too, but okay. go ahead. I got what you wanted originally. If you put Kenneth Walker and Cooper Cup, mm -hmm. it actually stays on the Giants D, but you get DeAndre Swift. Okay. So you get DeAndre Swift, Cooper Cup, Kenneth Walker, who you have a, a hypothesis on that if it's going to be outside and it's them at home, it could still be them doing well, but not Geno. And then you land on the Giants D just to round it out against Washington, which is kind of the opposite of the original D you wanted. So it's who cares? Just land there. But what do you got? Okay. So there is a mini skinny stack in one of these games that's projected for a super high total. And it's Cook and A-Chain. Okay. Let me find that here. So um, A-Chain is what, 6,700 this 67 and Cook is 72. And we've seen that A-Chain with Tua has been wildly successful. He got his touchdown stolen by Mostert last week. I don't know if he ended up getting in or not. I just remember watching that. HN still scored 26.7 or something last week. Yeah. Like, they just he's a part of their passing game now. Eight targets. In yeah, games he, got, he with, got a receiving touchdown. In games with, when Tua, in the three games that Tua has started this year, seven, seven, and eight targets. And he's averaged 26.8, and that's why I remember 26.7, because everyone was talking about he that pregame, and he hit it. the exact, pretty much, point one off. But yeah, so if you put those two in, you if, have 4,900. But Or if you want to do the cheaper version of it, Get rid of Cook and put in like Shakir or Coleman, one of those guys. So, do you like any sixty four hundred dollar wide receiver? Let's Jayden, see, Jaden Reed. No. Okay, so then do let you, me go back. No, I, I don't really love it. But do you like anyone at seventy five hundred at receiver? Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is sitting right there. Or Tyreek. Yeah, but oh, but you already got uh, HN. Okay, this projects good actually. If you go, what you flipped it to HM with um, Cook, you go Neighbors with the Giants D. And it rounds it out, and it projects only five points off the original. Neighbors, Giants, D, and that gives us Quentin Johnson again? Yeah, I, I kept him in from the original just to see, because yeah. I don't hate it, especially if Disley picks up steam. Sure, but I don't think Disley's going to have any steam if first plays. Right, and that's where then it just doesn't matter, but it's still a run back. It still fits the stack. It's just whether you want it to go. I, I do think Hurst, there's something to be said. Hurst for practiced on full on Thursday. He's playing, so just get just don't even think about Disley. Right. I mean, you can play Hayden Hurst. <laughs> I would say, I would say the other argument is just what we talked about earlier. In order for you know, going to the mid-range guys with Jameis instead of just the cheapies to make everything fit, 
you're kind of hoping for a little bit of back and forth and for somebody to be involved and push them. If you want to take a shot on QJ, I don't have a problem with it. No, but let's say we don't want to do it. Let's just say it's a smash by Cleveland. You, you can just go back to Parker Washington. That's what I'm saying. If we go to Parker Washington, we free up eight thousand. We free up another eight hundred bucks. You can play Philly D versus Jacksonville, or you can get up or to move off AJ Brown if you wanted to. That too, yeah, yeah. Or Cooper Cup, or whoever it might be. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a week where I or, don't. Or you keep neighbors. Get rid of Chase Brown, and you can get back up to sixty seven hundred for your flex, which is Drake London, James Connor, Brian Thomas, who I have no idea if he's going to play or not. But now we don't have any Falcons. Boom! You chuck in Drake London. So James Cook, and you get Drake London. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good too. But I think that the AJ Brown one would make more sense up from neighbors because we, we just played Parker Washington. So at least- I don't. I also don't think people are getting away with that this week. What? Playing a guy like AJ Brown on his own, getting twenty ish points, and winning a tournament because of the way the pricing set up this week, I just don't feel like they're okay. going to get away with that. And so my argument would be back to the original optimal. I'd be looking for the Hertz AJ Brown lineup because I think if AJ Brown explodes this week for like thirty five, then obviously Hertz just crushed two, and he might even run one in instead of three because he throws a couple to him. How about this? How about instead of playing A.J. Brown, you play the significantly cheaper Devonta Smith? That's possible. In that spot. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And that gets us up to B. John Robinson in the flex. So what do we have right now exactly? Winston, Winston Cook, A-Chain, yeah. Devonta Smith and Parker Washington, Judy and Njoku, B. John and Giants D. All right. Smith is 68. Washington, and then yeah, instead of going sixty-seven, London, you get to go to your um, seventy-four. Bijan Bijan. Robinson, seventy-four. The other one projected a few points better, but only because the Devonte Parker Washington stuff is not going to pop anywhere. But it's who you like in that position anyway. All right, let's build out one more quarterback stack here. Should we do Lamar, or is he just too expensive? I feel like it's too expensive and too hard to get right. And I don't love, like, you don't love the runbacks. You don't love trying to figure it out, especially with J- Johnson being added to the mix, things like that. So um, I would do the Hertz stack. I would do the, what else would I look at here? Would you do a Dak stack? No, I don't even know. Who, I mean, if it's Lamb just, Ferguson. It's just Dak Lamb. I'd, I'd put Ferguson in. And we already talked about Bijan and London. I think that's... I, and it's got a 51.5 point total. I, I just feel like this is too expensive. Well, would you do the cousin side? You talked about the Mooney upside. Oh, you, you know what? what yeah, about that, that? That, that's interesting. I actually kind of like that more. Mooney and Pitts. Get rid of London. Mooney and Pitts with Kirk. All right. Let's do that. I don't hate it. Mooney. Your boy, Kyle Pitts. He's lucky he uh, got counted for that touchdown that he dropped. Yeah, that was a drop, I think. But uh, <laughs> hard to tell what is a real touchdown these days. Um, are you wanting to get Lamb into this thing? You can put Lamb or Dowdle. Like, oh. Lamb's 8,800. I, I only really want to play Lamb myself. With Dak. With Dak or with Cousins. Because at least then he's the one that gets the game okay, rolling. How, how, and about, that how, about this? how about we drop Pitts, use London with Kirk, and then we use Ferguson as the tight end. And just overstack it? Yeah. Yeah, good with that. But now we have fifty one hundred bucks. Like I don't know what we do here. It's like Chubb and Madison or Chubb and Chase. Who did you? The Chubby Chase. Who do you have in there right now? I've got Cousins, Mooney, London, Lamb, Ferguson. Cousins, Mooney, London, Jake Ferguson. Yeah, fifty one sixty per player. But you still have. You said Lamb to go in there instead of Pitts. No, I took Lamb out because you said you didn't want to play him without Dak. Okay, gotcha. So I just gotcha. used Ferguson. Yeah, yeah this is good. As this the is Cowboy. good. I like this. This is plenty now to work with. Um, all right, let's go back to our running backs. We talked about Chubb. We're not playing any Winston or, or cheap Cleveland dudes just to play them as one-offs, so we can use Chubb. Chubby Chaser? Yeah, do you want to put Chase Brown? Chubby Chase? Yeah, yeah, Chubby Chaser. Yeah, there you go. Chubb okay. and Brown. Now we're at 4,700. And who is some of the other mid-range guys that we let's like? Go. Let's throw in Titans D, see what happens. And we got 54 or 50. Oh, I bet, you I, can, I bet you I can make this end on Chris Olave if I wanted to. I'm sure you could. It would be Olave and 4,800, whatever that gets you. Let's see, let's see. Coked out Jalen at 36 and 7,300 for Kenneth Walker. What about that Washington guy over Coker, though? I mean, we, I just, we've just played him in every lineup so far. Tyreek Hill with Parker Washington. Tyreek Hill with Parker Washington. And the Tennessee D. Wow, that's a good projection. That's a good lineup. You like Tyreek here? Is Tyreek cooked? Maybe Cust was right all along? Tyreek, man. How do we get... 
now we don't get. That's why. Um, yeah, I, I like that. And Parker Washington could be Jalen Coker. Jalen Coker. Well, who do you like better out of those two? I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, you you like. Uh, I, I would probably rather Parker Washington because Trevor Lawrence throws him the ball and not Bryce Young. Coker Just did make, have a big his, week last week, so that's why. But that is true. The quarterback. Yeah. I mean. Bryce Young got there with Jalen Coker when Denver legitimately was like, all right, just can you please end this game? That's like, right. We're up by so much. Give him a freebie. But I, I know um, Parker Washington get, is getting a little love this week, but it's time for him to have a, have a shot here, man. This well, is it gives him a shot. Christian Kirk is out for the season. Obviously, Brian Thomas is banged up. Gabe Davis is banged up. Like, that entire team is injured. He's their one healthy receiver. And he's 3600 bucks. So if there's a spot to take a shot, it's on him. Okay, one second. I got to fix this one then. If I take out Tyreek and the defense, can I fit? Oh, baby, let me see. Giants and who? Um, hun- Oh, no, I got it. Damn, the Giants fit in. Perfect. It's Washington with Saquon. And Saquon does the work on the ground. Giants with Saquon. Giants, D, his old team. You're, it's an old school running back DST for his previous team. But yeah, if you go Giants here, and this projects only three points off your original. So you've got Cousins, Mooney, London, run it back with Jake Ferguson. You got the Chubby Chaser. We've done this before for some reason, but I think it was with Nick Chubb and Jamar Chase (laughs) that we kept playing, and it might have been in the division game, and that's when we used it. But the Chubby Chaser is Nick Chubb and Chase Brown in those two spots. You get a nice secondary stack where Barkley does all the work on the ground. Parker Washington needs to get involved on the way back, and then you use the Giants D at $2,300. That's that's money. Do you like Jags D, Panthers D, or Giants D? Giants, right? Just because yeah. they, they get pressure. Yeah. Maybe maybe they fluke. I think into they're better something. than they than people think, but it's like again they're on a you know, what they're the Giants. Yeah. So it's always going to be a thing. I get it. But we're we're playing DFS. They're twenty three hundred. We're not on anybody on Washington. I actually don't think I, I think Giants will get way more steam. I don't think anybody will own Washington. So I have no problem if you can flip the build. But I think this is really interesting, and it makes a lot of sense on how these guys actually get there. The only other thing that you can do here with the what we've allocated so far is you could turn Chubb or Brown into a receiver if you wanted to, but I don't think that I want to. Just looking at the options, like Shakir would be the best option. I think I'd rather have Chubb or Chase Brown. Yeah, this is, this is a good lineup right here. You know a good one when you see it doesn't mean it'll win, but it's like this is a, the setup is correct. We're playing a lot of the spots we have interest in. I don't feel like we really did anything crazy where we're like, oh, but we just need this guy to do it. We played Washington. He's that guy for us, but we played him with Barkley. Barkley now, does all this on the ground. Washington it, needs to be on the run. In back. fairness, I know Krull did not work out well for me last <laughs> week, but I played Tillman in almost every lineup. Yeah. And it was like the week we played Slayton in every lineup. Our $3,000 like dude at receiver that we throw into these lineups every time tends to do pretty well. Yeah, it's Parker Washington week, baby. Let's have it. Enter. And it's Parker Washington as our Washington guy with the Giants against. That's the, the real stack team. right there. See, people don't think about these sorts levels, of things. Levels, yeah, to they're, they're they're not upgrading and expanding their mind to how <laughs> stacks actually work in lineups. Giants D versus Parker Washington, the ultimate game stack this week. I wonder how much we kill our credibility when we make jokes like this. When the rest of the show is so I'm, focused I, on I, process, strategy, and good stuff, and then we throw out stupid shit like that. But I do think it is at least a good lineup. And when you are building, I think the real truth is just to look for what makes sense. If people think, I don't think it's Washington play Coker. You can, I'm just saying at least the way he would have his opportunities and get there is when we jam Barkley to get all the work on the ground. And our original optimal had hurts, which, well, I don't think he's going to be popular. It is a way to fit it, to go down to him. And we just saw Jacobs run all over this Jacksonville defense. So we should be able to easily see Barkley do it again. Here's the thing. I wasn't joking. I know. You, you're probably thinking, uh, you're mega minding it. You're good. <laughs> we, we know this and how it works. I'm good with it. All right. That'll do it. On the Pat Mayo experience, TamboTidbits.com. Can you give us like some insights? Is it going to be just a list of your tidbits? No. Is it more? Actually, that's why I said, don't worry. The tidbits I said would always be for free as lo- the lifetime of them, as long as I want to continue doing them. And I've had some fun with it. People do support. They put, they put them out there and what. But I thought it was the best name for the newsletter launch just to get that rolling. It's not going to be anything like your newsletter that comes out. It's not going to be a curation that takes it off X where people are, well, I got to get the newsletter to get tidbits. There's going to be a lot more to it. It's much bigger than people probably think, but I've been working on a passion project in the DFS space for about four years. I have the the receipts. I'm going to show them. I bought the domain four and a half years ago. I've been working and sending myself notes on this for four years. I actually have a receipt I'm going to show today about what now has eventually become Ship It Nation from eight or nine or maybe 10 years ago of of wanting to get into this space. I obviously have a high passion for what I do. And so 
Um, it just takes time. You don't want to rush things. I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time. You've helped me a ton, but you just, you pick up more as you go along. You find out what your true passion is, what you love doing. I get people questioning me, DMing me, ask me stuff all the time, do a ton of process stuff, all of this. I think it's the, you know, the, the transformation is what people are looking for. So I think, you know, that's a, a bit of a teaser, but it's definitely going to be something fun, not for everyone. And that's okay, but it's a passion pursuit project of mine, more of a journey. And I think a lot of people will want to go on it with me. So I'm, I'm hoping so at least, and appreciate all the support. Tambostidbits.com is where you sign up. So you'll be the first to know. I'll be there. Tambostidbits.com. You should use code Mayo at underdog right now. And listen, we hit a winner on Thursday. Let's put that money forward. Hit a 20 to one, two weeks ago, missed it by a target for another 20 to one last week. But hey, that's part of the game. You, you win, you lose. But if you can start picking up some like six to ones every single week, you're going to end up up by the end of the year. So code Mayo, get that deposit bonus up to a thousand bucks plus the free pick. And you help out the show as well too. Okay. Smash the like while you're here, sub to the channel. And I will see you next time. Experience! Experience!